guys what's happening. So, got another Prusa to fix. Alright, so this came in uh, yesterday. Yeah, it's a Prusa Mini. I've never actually worked on one of these before. Um, yeah, pretty cool little printer. If you guys are wondering how I get all these uh, 3D printers to fix, um, I made a website uh, a few months ago. Well, actually, the first one was about a year ago, but um, links down below. But yeah, I just made a website. You know, I fix 3D printers and I get calls. I mean, it's not my primary job. It's just I might get calls from here every once in a while, here and there, you know. Um, Alright, so that's an interesting extruder here. Um, so I don't know, is that a Hamera? What is, who makes that? Original Prusa. What's funny, it's very Hamera ish with like the heat sink right here and the heater block. So I don't know if Prusa is designing their own um, uh, extruder now. Because look at that, it looks pretty cool. It's almost like integrated into the linear rods here. So the customer said that. Uh, this thing was jamming, obviously. This is exactly how it came, so uh, you can see the filament in there. So, I, having fired this up, I don't even know what's wrong with it. Okay, filament sensor. What's this thing right here? Is it like a filament pad? Like I said, I've never even worked on one of these before, so. Um, like pr uh, with producer tr tradition, it's all 3D printed, so. Hmm. Alright, well, let's fire this up and see what's wrong with it. Okay, so that's interesting. It doesn't actually have a traditional power supply. It's just basically a power brick. So obviously 110, 120 comes in here. It's probably either going to be converted to 12 volt or 24 volt. Um, most printers are 24 volt now. Yeah, 24 volt VDC. So yeah, it's 24 volt. So, I mean, if it's jamming in the way this looks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this fan. If this fan stops spinning, I mean, this could create a lot of heat creep and, and jamming issues. But what's, hold on a second here. Oh, okay, so it's open. I was like, how is it? You'd think the fan would be on the other side, but yeah, this is just open air return. See that right there? Okay, that's just an open heat sink and air blows through it. Yeah, I've definitely, I mean, I've, I've, I've fixed over 100 3D printers. And uh, what's funny is they're all different. They all function exactly the same. You know, X, Y, Z, up and down, extruder system. They might be different, but they all function the same. You know, you have this is a most likely capacitive sensor, mini, um, just like any sort of like, even like my own printer bot, you know what I mean? It's the same thing. It's just, you know, they all kind of look differently, but they all function exactly the same. Um, this is probably running Marlin, some heavily customized Marlin firmware. Um, let's see, let's go up. Prusa Mini. Interesting bootloader. So I wonder if this is actually, it says Marlin, so I mean obviously it's Marlin, but, okay, so it's not really, I, okay, so the difference between these, uh, a lot of these, like, Creality touch screens, Big Tree Tech, is, I don't know if this interface is directly with Marlin, that's one of the issues, like, they function more like a mini computer, that have their own ARM processor, that send G-code commands, so they act more like Octoprint, or like a computer, right, you're not actually interfacing directly with the firmware on the board, so, you know, sometimes baby stepping or like different things like that, you can't interface directly with it. Um, or you like, you can't control like the, let's say if you had trinamic drivers, you couldn't control like the driver current. Right, let's do a preheat and just see what happens with this thing. So I'm going to do a PLA 215. I wonder if I can just do the hot and I am, uh, so, um, like I said, this is a, I'm new to this screen. I don't. What's funny is I, I'd say 90% of the printers I get are probably Creality, but um, I mean, I mean, over on this channel, I think I've probably fixed 20 or so. Um, like sometimes I just don't I don't film the video because I'm doing the exact same thing over and over again. So it's like, why well, create a, the video of the exact same thing I did before? Um, I wonder how I want to, uh, I guess I'll just do PLA, I'll heat them both. I didn't really want to heat the bed up, but it's a small bed, so it should, and it's 24 volts, so it should go faster. What I'm looking for is typically, let's say with Marlin, at about 50 degrees, this fan would, with the default for, for Marlin. Okay, fan kicked on. That's good. I was kind of worried if this fan failed, it would, it would cr create heat creep, and then uh, it would create jamming inside here because it would, you know, it, 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 when the heat creeps up into here, 
then it uh, it creates jams because it's heating up too high. It blocks the path. Okay, where do you? I mean, is there an SD card somewhere in here? Where do you? Uh... Oh, that's a no. <laughs> kind of, it looked like a filament holder, but it's actually a USB. Uh... Like I said, I'm not familiar with this printer, so. Okay, so I guess you just use your, it's just a USB card. Not even like a micro SD, I don't think. Okay. That's cool, I mean, that, that's definitely cool. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I mean, now I switch everything, all my printers over to Clipper, so I'm a fan of Clipper, but. I mean, I like Octoprint. Octoprints are awesome, too. But yeah, that's interesting that, they, well, they, sometimes like, with, with, uh, Prusa, right, sometimes when, when it's even like with Windows, let's say Microsoft, I'm actually an IT guy. So, sometimes when they make things too easy, it makes it makes it more difficult for me to figure out. It's like when they try to make it simple for people to understand and figure out, it actually makes it more difficult for me. Because then I have to learn a whole new system of graphical or whatever. You know, where it's, I'm used to doing a thing a certain way. Like the real way of doing it, not the, the simplified way of doing it. Yeah, these are cool designs. I mean, I don't know, it's like you have your... Your X right here, your X and your extruder, which is a Bowden setup, obviously, because you have a tube here. Um, and then this little cover flips like that. Yeah, it is pretty cool because I get to see all these different designs, you know, how they how they do stuff. But Prusa does stuff really differently, so like this is I've never even seen a design like this before. I mean, they all they're all they all function exactly the same. So this is obviously is a gear reduction. You can see the larger gear. I don't know if it's a dual drive or not, but. All right, so I'm going to see if I can pull that filament right there. And um, I'm just going to, I'm going to do actually open up Cure, create a profile for this thing, and uh, we'll do a test print, see what actually happens. Lose some filament. All right, so I mean, one I thing I, I noticed that's odd, that the bed's at 60, it's at 60, the printer's being commanded to go at 215, but I'm only getting 170 here. Alright, so I'm turning the bed off. Let's see. So, I mean, it could be a bad heater cartridge. It's temperature. Yeah, I'm still going to have to learn the menu. Um, see, it? is it 170? Yeah, 170. You're going to your neck. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over COVID, man. Um, Look at that. I won't go over. But there it goes, there it goes. It's weird, so if I manually is it some a software bug? So when I preheated it, it wouldn't go over 170. Okay, at least I know it's the hot end is fine. Alright, well hopefully I can maybe get this out now. He's at 170. I, I wasn't able to get it there. Oh, there we go. Usually, when I push into it first, you know, usually you'd want to uh, push the filament in first and then pull it out. And there's already definitely I can find some annoyances. I hate the kind that the auto filament. I know they're trying to make it easy for people to figure it out, but I mean, I hate these auto filament load things where you can't actually just like pull lever and manually load it. I mean, that just to me is like a recipe for like problems man um, I think you should always be able to like release the gears and be able to manually fish it through there I don't even know what's going to happen but we'll see filament load filament filament appears to be already loaded no it's not yeah load filament okay Why is it going up? Is it going to home first? God, it, this is so bad. It's all right. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. This is why it's like, dude, you're trying to make it easy for people, but you're just making it more difficult. That's really cool, actually. And uh, there's an RJ45 Ethernet port. But right now, I, want to, I can't get to load the filament. So I got to take this thing apart and figure it out. Um, 
there's uh, there might be a jam because I can't get it even past it. I can't get it to load into here. So, um, all right, gotta take it apart. Yeah, I think this design to me is like a fail. I know there's a lot of proof proof of fanboys out there. Uh, I mean, they do make some cool stuff. It's just like you make this. I mean, now I have to take this whole thing. I mean, I well, it was three screws to get this off, but I had to totally like get totally into it just to figure out what's going on in here. Um, you know, it's, it's I mean, normally it, it's overly complicated for no reason. Yeah, so here it is, taken apart. Some screws in there. Something will not load in here. It's a it's actually just, it's a single hob gear with a ball bearing on one side. Um, is the spring tension too tight? Wow. Yeah, because I can't get this thing to even load in there. So, so this the odd issue with the, the heat and the extruder. I think and there's a little piece right in there. You can see right there. Right there. Um, and I think in the troubleshooting process, what they did is they, maybe they, they cranked down the, the tension. They cranked the tension down so hard that it wouldn't grab. But also if that little piece of material is blocking the path, it's not going to load the filament. So I think I couldn't get it to load because it's cranked down too much. And there's a thing blocking it. Yeah, okay, there it is. There it is. A little piece stuck in there. Alright. Alright, so there's another blockage from the here. So I, I can't even get the filament into here. Into the actual hob gear spot. Um, yeah, this is just kind of, you know, it's it's more complicated than it needs to be. So troubleshooting, like for me, I can figure it out. But for the average, some people just can't figure it out. It's, you know, you, since you can't see the path, you're, it's almost like you're, you're working blind. So you would never know that it was all jammed up everywhere if you didn't take it apart. All right, so there was multiple jams. Um, yeah, you can see a piece of clear filament there. Stuck in the PTFE tube. Get that out. All right, so I got back together. So the one thing I'm gonna have to do is adjust this crank this tension here. It was totally cranked down, buttoned down. Um, because I think they were trying to troubleshoot and they couldn't figure out why it was, wasn't feeding. Um, because if it's too tight, it's not gonna, you know what I mean? It's gonna, okay, what happens is, if it's too tight, obviously it's not gonna load. Um, if it's too loose, it's gonna slip. Um, and then also if it's too tight, it's gonna wear your bearings too. It's gonna screw up those bearings. So you just kind of need like the, enough to grab it, but also at the same time not wear out your bearings. Let's try this again. I might see if I can do this one more hand. See if I can grab it. What's this thing doing? Come on, man. It's not grabbing. Right, let me see if I can push it with my hand. All right, so I just had to grab it a little bit, push it but now because I... I have to load this again, even though, yes, it's already appeared to be loaded, so I guess it saves it. Oh, load filament. Yes. PLA. Continue. There it goes. You can see it coming through. We need for temperature. Mm, I don't know. Not a fan. <laughs> Cool, I don't know. I mean, it's not my thing, I guess. It's, I'd rather just be able to hand manually feed it through. All right, purging. All right, yes, yeah, looking good. That means that obviously it, it purged out the rest of the green that was in there. All right, close the cover. All right, I'm gonna create a little, uh, well, I'm obviously I figured out what the issue was, but it was, I guess I, I loosen this up a little bit because, I mean, over time you get used to, you kind of have a feel for like what the tension should be. Um, like it, you don't want to over tension it. So, um, it's hard to describe how much it is, but it needs to be, you need to be able to pull it back just enough to where it's, you know, not too much, but I don't know, it's hard to describe. All right, well, I hope the Z offset set, I mean, they do, I mean, like I said, they have all these wizards and stuff to do this, but. I'm hoping that's going to be saved and set. Let's see what it's under. I'm guessing I don't. It's under calibration, but 
settings. So there's no default profile. I don't want to actually even bother trying to learn Pusa Slicer. Um, so when you don't actually have a printer, just choose one that's. I mean, they're all they, what, all these printers function the exact same way. Most of them, because they're all in Marlin. So uh, the main thing is just I got to measure the bed size. So it prints at the center. So I'm gonna hit Prusa 3 Mini. I'll call this. I might be going into too much detail, but uh, I'm not gonna be running. I mean, a, a G20 I command is when it goes in and it probes a bed. There's obviously an auto leveling sensor here. So it depends on the firmware, right? They might just save the offset. That would part of the calibration process. It tests, it automatically tests the bed, and so you don't have to run G29 every single time. You don't have to do a probing routine before you start the print. I, mean, I can do that in G code. It's not a big deal. Um, but I'm going to run it with just a regular G28, which is home cycle, then start the print, uh, and then skip the G29. And then I'm going to go through and uh, because they kind of designed this to be simpler for people. So they wouldn't know what to do a G29 command, you know, it's something you have to manually add in the slicer, uh, you know, in the startup routine, the startup G-code. Alright, so I'm just going to do a simple calibration cube, take the SD card out, put it in my computer, I'll copy it over. Yeah. Um, because it's such a small bed, you're not going to get a lot of tilt, you know, um, not like a huge bed, you know, we have peaks and valleys. All right, let's do a print, my calibration cube. I did 30 skirt lines on the outside, just in case I got to dial in the, the baby set or, or the offset baby stepping. Um, you know, it gives me a lot of time to, to adjust it before I start the calibration cube. All right, so 215, 60 degrees. All right, so it does take a while to, also it doesn't look good. So I'm gonna do a negative bring it down until it comes up a negative means it bring goes closer all right let's see negative two okay it's way more than that let's try three okay that's why I did 30 lines okay let's try four wow this is way off way out See, it's higher on one side than the other. Alright, so I get this thing to uh, go back and mesh, I guess I call it in this one, mesh bed lewing. Like I said, normally I like to run these uh, before I even start the print. It's called G29, and I'll go through and check for issues. And then you have to usually mess with the offset. Alright, so the bed is still really far out. I mean, it's obviously tighter on the left side, way too high on the right side. But I've done, I've gone through their actual routines of uh, trying to level this thing. So I'm guessing the negative offset, the offset will be somewhere like negative, probably seven, maybe nine, somewhere in there. Once it's all done, said and done. But I'm not going to continue on that. I got to figure out why this thing's way off. You know, lots of times, what you have to do is you have to picture yourself as a customer. They're not going to know all these G code commands. They're not going to know G29, all these different commands to troubleshoot and fix it. You got to picture yourself in their shoes, like what they're looking at, what they're going to do, you know, with the documentation provided by Prusa. So I'm trying to get this thing leveled within a way that they can figure out how to figure, you know, what's going to work for them. Thinking about it, the direction that it's off even in, it's probably sagging this way, like that way, because it's tighter on this side, looser on this side. So this is sagging or not straight up and down but that's what the probe normal sensor is normally to set to do so I did actually add a G20 hand command to my G code hopefully maybe by probing the, the bed before I do the uh, print it will fix the the level issue right, I didn't get the beginning of this but so before the print after the homing cycle G28 I'm telling this thing to go G29 that's bed leveling so maybe this will fix I don't know if the Prusa Slicer has that or not, so. But I know. Right, so having the G29 command definitely dialed in. So I'm at negative offset of one dot, or negative one dot seven. But you can see I'm getting good, uh, but now I'm actually, am I losing, am I losing filament here? But now I am losing extrusion here. What's up with this thing, man? Jeez. 
So you can see that's opening up right there. Now I'm no longer getting pulling the filament in. See halfway through the process. This actually the printer is actually pretty annoying. Um, it stopped obviously it stopped extruding, but for no reason though, because I was getting good layer adhesion here, you know. Then all of a sudden, oh whoops, I'm not sure if it's slipping. I didn't hear any clicking. Uh, tension is good, so um, and the first layer wasn't too tight, so don't know. One of the issues with a single, uh, you know, not dual drive grabbing on both sides, is that it easily cuts into the filament. Like, it will just rip through the filament, you know what I mean, on one side, then it'll stop extruding. So, alright, so with messing with this printer for about an hour, the definitely the weak design issue is this extruder system. This is going to be a non-stop headache, guarantee it. Um, it just, it doesn't want to grab, or wants to cut into it. Like right now, I think it just it stopped extruding. It, it will just randomly stop extruding. Alright, another under extrusion fail. Alright, so I did some research online. Every single person that has this printer has the same issue. <laughs> God, yeah. I already know it. It's just, it's not dual drive. It needs to be dual drive, man. Alright, so I'm messing with this for over an hour now. And I feel like I'm good and good tension in here. You know, because I, I can't, you know, I have it disabled, it's not pushing through. I'm just trying to figure out how efficient this extruder system is. If the weak link is the extruder system, or if there's something going on in here, the nozzle itself. Alright. So I took a top up. So obviously there's a PTFE tube in there. It's interesting how they have one in between the two, like that. It's almost like I'd rather just have one single piece of PTFE tube, like they do it like on the realities but I even that I'm not a fan of that either I mean, I'm always I'm more of a fan of direct drive because I could have easily just made this thing in direct drive um, right, another design flaw so there's a little PTFE tube that runs through here to here I, I can only I can I, oh, I can only go max of negative two that's that's not very smart to limit me to to negative two um, so because I'm not getting good layer first layer adhesion you know it's not I mean it needs to be tighter than that um, but there's a little PTFE tube that runs from here to here, but it needs to have, it needs to have tension. So you basically need to like loosen these screw, three screws up, and it needs to be tension on this thing right here. On the, uh, it needs to be locked down. So um, and it looks like we're under extruding again. It looks like I'm getting some good extrusion now. So, but that doesn't solve this issue here, right? I, since I maxed at negative two offset, I can't bring it any lower. Even though, yeah, that might be fine for some, but it's not. I should be able to bring it. I shouldn't be stopped. Um, okay, there we are. So I actually created a longer tube here. That's going to bring the offset down. Um, because what you're doing is you're you're hitting those, those three tension screws and you're trying to get it against the what's it called the copper. Uh, Compression tube. All right, so since I extended the PDFE tube, I brought the negative down to zero because I have to reset a lot again because I actually brought the hot end lower. Yeah, the more I mess with this printer, the more frustrated I'm getting with it. Um, and I'll give you my final opinion when I, once I get it all fixed and solved. Yeah, I can already tell that's a lot lower. I can maybe cut even like a half millimeter off the PTFE tube. It's funny I have it perfectly dialed in at zero. <laughs> like right at zero and it's perfectly dialed in. But that's not usually a good thing. I mean, that's like, I see, because I can't go any positive here. I can only go negative, so. You, you can't have it at zero because it's, uh, filaments are different, you know, you have to be able to adjust for filaments. Um, so I gotta cut a little bit more of that PTFE tube off. Yeah, it'd be great if I could sleep like that, but like I said, it's, it needs to be, uh, you need to have, be able to have adjustment. And if you, as you can, what I'm saying is you can go negative, but you can't go positive. So I can't bring it up any further, so. Alright, so, I'm messing with this printer for like two hours now. Um, trying to, I mean, I'm figuring all the inner outs of it, so. The trick here is that, um, 
the jamming, a lot of the jamming was caused, I think there was a little gap between the actual like PTFE tube and like the uh, the tension, like it, the the brass, the compression nut needs to, it needs to create a tight fit between the PTFE tube. So you need to basically tighten that down and push up on the, you know, so undo the three set screws there and then push up on the hot end to bring in there so it's a nice tight snug fit. But if you're too, if you're, if the PTFE tube is too short, then you're maxed out here on the on the z-axis adjust. If you're too much, you know, then you're, um, you know, I mean, you won't have, there's no adjustments. So, all right, I'm gonna let this thing finish, um, and then I'll give you my final opinions once this thing is fully is totally solved. All right, just finished, hundred percent. Okay, cool. So, bring that through. Looks pretty good. Um, yeah, if this was my first printer, I probably wouldn't get this printer. Just by, I think long term, you're gonna have a lot of issues in this area here. Um, you know, when you buy a Prusa, you're, you're you're buying a name. It's like a Louis Vuitton handbag. You know, it's you're just buying a name. It's no different than any other 3D printer. I mean, I work on 3D printers all day long, and uh, there's nothing special about it. So, but it costs twice as much money. So, personally, I, if this was your first 3D printer, I'd probably get like an Ender 3 or something like that, Creality Ender 3, but, uh, alright, so we're back in business, so I think the, I think the main cause that caused all the issues was maybe this thing wasn't on all the way, you know, I, I lengthened the PTFE tube a little bit, and I made sure that it was, you know, three set screws here, pull it tight against this right here, the, the brass compression nut here, or the, uh, we're not, I guess it's a compression nut, I guess. Not sleeve, but yeah. Uh, Alright, um, all right, now they're Prusa fixed. So, I think, I'm, like, I mean, at least 10 of these things. I've, I definitely fixed at least 10, 10 Prusas. Um, Alright, yeah, I've fixed just about every, every brand of printer, so I'm kind of. <laughs> I've seen it all, man. Nothing special about Prusas. Alright, cool. Yeah.